God bless you guys. Coach Timothy here. I pray that you've all had a wonderful week. I have another prophetic word from the Lord. And as with all the prophetic words that I upload on this channel, I do want to begin uh, with a prayer. But before I do, I just want to say welcome to all of the new subscribers. God bless you. God bless you. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, but you're looking to do so, what are you waiting for? You know, hit that like, share, and subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you can get notifications of when I'm uploading a video or going live. Because I go live every Monday night at 9.15 Eastern Standard Time, uh, 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with intercessory prayer where you can come in and you can actually leave your prayer requests that you have and I pray for you live on the air, on the uh, YouTube live. And so, uh, yeah, feel free to, to, to join us every Monday night. Also, we have memberships. There are other things that you can look through on the channel as well. I'm also a vocal coach, so I'm offering right now. Uh, I have a few slots open, so I'm looking for new voice students if you're interested in that. And also, um, yeah, you can see all of my details, all of my information is in the home page of the channel in the description. So you just need to go there and you can see all of that information there, all of the links to what I have, to the memberships, to uh, uh, to the coaching sessions, to one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching sessions, and so forth. Uh, you can see all of that if you feel led by the Lord to sow into the channel. You can also do uh, do so there on uh, in the description, okay? So all of that information is there. If you write an email, guys, make sure to keep the email short if you want me to give you a quick response, okay? If you have a longer email, it's going to be put on the back burner. But if you give me a short email, then I'll be able to respond to you quicker, okay? That being said, Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just bless your name, Lord God, and give your name all the glory, praise, and honor that you so rightly deserve. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, as I deliver this word, Father, I decrease myself and ask that you would increase in me, Lord God. Have your way in this word, Father. I ask that you would put your hand upon my mouth and put your fingers upon my tongue to guide my words that they may edify, comfort, and exhort your people today. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, that you would uh, uh, let this word go out with strength and power as you would have it to go out, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it minister to those who it needs to minister to, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare and decree and confess that no weapon formed against me or this word shall prosper. And every single tongue that rises up against me or this word in judgment, I do now condemn in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is so in Jesus name I pray. Amen. So here's the word, guys. The Lord says, bow down and praise me. It's time to put the devil to shame and for you to be established. Now, I think that that's a very self-explanatory title. Um, but just to clarify, the Lord is saying it's time for you to go into praise mode. OK, it's time for you to go into praise mode. It's time for you to become thankful because of what God is getting ready to do in your life. And he said it's time to put the devil to shame and for you to be established. He's getting ready to expose the enemy in your life. The enemy is about to be put to shame for all of the things that the enemy did to you in your life. God is about to render his judgment. OK, um, so all of those uh, that came against you, all of those that 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 seek to oppose you. God is getting ready to render his judgment towards those people. And so um, he's getting ready to put the devil to shame. Everything that the devil tried to do to you didn't work. So now the enemy has to pay for it. Right. And he says, it's time for you to be established. The Lord is getting ready to establish you. Okay. So the Lord gave me actually two, two main scriptures. One is Genesis chapter 32, verse 26. And then the other is Psalm 89, the whole Psalm. So um, I'm going to read uh, Genesis chapter 32, verse 26. It says, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. So we know that this is the story of when Jacob, um, he was wrestling with the angel of the Lord the entire night, right? And we know that this is, um, he knew who he was dealing with. I mean, you, it was pretty obvious that he knew who he was dealing with and he would not let the angel of the Lord go until he received the blessing from the angel of the Lord. And so it is with many of you that you have not let go of the Lord's hand. You have not let go of the Lord at all in your in your season of of transformation. 
um, and now that you are ready to work and now that you're ready to go forward in ministry, God is getting ready to bless you. OK, you did not let go of the Lord's hand. He's getting ready to bless you. And so um, I'll read uh, Psalm 89 after I finish the word. So the Lord says this, he says, and he said, let me loose to stretch forth for the early light seeks the day to cause to make me depart, exalted to excel and grow and increase, lifting up the light. And he answered and commanded, I will not let you loose unless you kneel down and praise and thank me. And so that's where I got that. Um, the, the Lord gave me that word through uh, Genesis chapter 32, verse 26. So again, the Lord is saying, you are about to be loosed, like you're about to be set, like set forth. OK, um, he's getting he's letting you loose to stretch forth. You're getting ready to expand. Your, your territory is about to enlarge for the early light seeks the day to cause me to, uh, to cause to make me depart, exalt it to excel. You are about to start your this new life, this new journey, this new uh, uh, assignment, this new calling, this this, this new purpose. Now, you're already in your calling, but this new purpose. OK, and so this purpose that God has um, been preparing you for, you're getting ready to step into it. That's what I mean by new purpose. OK, um, you're getting ready to step into what God has called you to do if you haven't already stepped into it already. But you're getting ready to be exalted, to excel. You're getting ready to excel in this thing. You're getting ready to move uh, to advance in this thing. You're getting ready to 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 be propelled forward and you're going to grow and increase. OK, and lifting up the light like God. The, the light of God is in you. It shines bright in you. And as you go forth in your ministry and as you go forth doing what God has called you to do, that light is going to shine extremely bright. And he answered and commanded, I will not let you loose unless you kneel down. and pray. So the Lord is saying that he, he, he wants you to do this before he sets you loose, before he, he really propels you. He wants you to be in the mode of praise, in the mode of worship, in the mode of thankfulness, in the mode of gratitude, in the mode of receiving uh, um um, God's glory with, 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 with thankfulness on your heart. That's the only way I can say it. it's like, you know, at this point, the Lord is just saying, praise me because it's already done. You're getting ready to receive what I've told you that you're going to receive. And so I just want you to praise me because the Lord is saying that I'm getting ready to set you loose. You're getting ready to expand. You're getting ready to, 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 to grow into who you, who, who you are always meant to be. Okay. Like the person that this thing that you're getting ready to do is something that you were always meant to do. And so God is saying before this happens, he just wants you to like, it's already done. Like you don't have to worry about praying anymore for God to do it. It's already done. He's saying, give me my praise now. Give me, you know, praise. Give, give me the fruit of your lips. You know, open your mouth. Give me your worship. That's what that's about. Okay. So the Lord says, and this is, uh, I gather, this was from the enemy, uh, to the enemy, I mean. The Lord says, the time now of his hiding himself in secret have you troubled. You have clothed him with shame to tread him underfoot. And so this is the thing. The Lord is saying, um, everything that you did now, like you passed the test. So because you passed the test, it's like now you're bringing shame on, on the enemy's head. So it's basically like when, 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 like the Bible says to bless those who curse you um, or who dis who spitefully, you know, misuse you or whatever. I, I can't I think I'm paraphrasing that scripture, but um, it's the same thing. It's like the Lord is saying that you've troubled the enemy. You've troubled the enemy because you've passed all of your tests. You didn't let anything that the enemy do uh, what you didn't let anything that the enemy did to you bother you like you passed your test with flying colors. You did everything that you were supposed to do and you did not let the enemy win at all. You didn't let him stop you. Didn't, you didn't let him hinder you. You may have gotten frustrated. You may have gotten uh, a little depressed at times, but you didn't give up and you didn't stop. And so the Lord is saying now, and see, the, the enemy was hiding himself. See, Satan doesn't come out just out in the open and blatantly do things, right? So he was hiding himself. And the Lord is saying the time of his hiding is over. The time of him, like, you know, doing all these subtle things, you know, in secret to distract you and to make you fall and to make you fail. He said that time is over. He's saying because of what you did, because of your obedience to the Lord, because of you going through, he's saying now that you have put, you have clothed the enemy in shame. All right. You've clothed the enemy in shame. And so, um, 
to tread him underfoot. So now, you know, the enemy is under your feet. Remember, I, that was the word that the Lord gave me a few days ago. So um, Satan is about to be exposed by the Lord and put to shame. And so the Lord wants you to really just pause in his presence to really think about that. And, and, to, and, and to, you know, he, he's about to put Satan under his feet. Okay? Because you did the work. You did what you were supposed to do. And they shall also be afraid on every side of themselves with mourning. Now, here's the thing. Now, the Lord is talking about your foes, your enemies. Okay? Jostling against one another and trembling with fear shall overwhelm them. And shame shall be upon every person against him. And utterly every head of every man will be shaken. So the Lord is saying here, um, what the Lord is about to do, like because of your elevation. So this elevation is what's going to bring, um, I shouldn't say this elevation. You're already been promoted. The, the, the reveal, your reveal, that's what it is. Your reveal is going to put them to shame because they're going to see what God did in your life. And it's going to put them to shame. OK, because they were the ones that were like barking at you, saying that you're going to be a failure. You're not going to make it. You didn't hear from the Lord. You didn't do this. And the Lord is saying, yeah, they're getting ready to see your come up. OK, and it's going to put them to shame. And they shall also be afraid on every side of themselves with mourning. They're going to be afraid because they're going to see the glory of God upon your life. They're going to see what God did in your life. And they're going to be um, not only are they going to be afraid, but they're going to be like sad. They're going to be crying, mourning because they didn't follow you. They didn't take heed to when you said, hey, God is moving and he's calling his people to come up higher. Um, they're going to be regretting everything that they said and did to you. Jostling against one another. Jostling means bumping it, bumping into each other. You know, it's going to be, uh, when I think of jostling, um, I think of confusion, just, just a bunch of confusion happening. Um, and trembling with fear shall overwhelm them. So, like I said, the fear of the Lord that they're going to see in your come up is going to overwhelm them. It's going to put them to shame. And so um, he says, and, and shame shall be upon every person against him. Him is you, the person who survived, the person who succeeded, the person who won, the person who um, crossed over into the promised land, the person who is receiving the elevation, the person who is receiving the promotion, um, the, the person who is walking in their purpose, who has started their ministry. Um, that's you. And so the Lord is saying, and shame shall be upon every person against him. And utterly every head of every man will be shaken. Now the head, when I think of head, I think of leadership. So these are people who also are in positions of leadership. These are people who thought that they were better than you. These are people who thought that they were, um, um, you know, at the top and you were at the bottom, you know. Um, so these are people who looked down on you. These are people who, who did not think you would ever come up to where they are, okay? And so the Lord is saying that they're getting ready to be shaken. In other words, they're, they're, their whole perception is about to be shaken, all right? And so, and here's the thing, like I, I believe that the Lord, the reason why the Lord is saying, is, is telling me this is because, you know, the scripture says that the Lord is always, always ready to forgive. And so what's getting ready to happen to these people um, who, who came against you, who were looking down on you, who were trying to keep you down, um, it's not something to rejoice over, okay? I'm getting ahead of myself when I say that, but um, I'm gonna keep going. It says, for your wrongs, now this is the Lord speaking again to the enemy, to the people who came against you, to the people who persecuted you, for your wrongs, for your unjust gain, for cruel, and false injustice as oppressors of unrighteousness, making violations against your brother, the supplanter. So you are the brother. So it means, you know, the kindred, um, your fellow person, your fellow man, fellow woman, the supplanter. A supplanter is somebody who overcomes by force. It is someone who overcomes forcefully. Okay. You are that overcomer that has forcefully overcome the enemy. Okay. Um, shame shall overwhelm you. So this is what the Lord is saying. He's saying that they are about to be put to shame. The shame uh, that they are going to feel is going to be too much for them to bear. Um, and you shall be made to fail, lose, and utterly want always hidden from sight. So in other words, these were people who were once out in the limelight. These were people who were out well-known. These were people who were, who were uh, well-respected. These are people who were 
who everybody, when they saw their face, everybody knew who they were, right? Um, the Lord is saying that now they're getting ready to experience what you once experienced, um, being, hidden from, uh, being hidden from sight, being unnoticed. So these are people who were always noticed, right? And the Lord is getting ready to reverse that. So he's getting ready to, they're getting ready to experience failure. They're getting ready to experience what it means to lose. They're getting ready to experience what it means to be in want. They're getting ready to experience what it means to be, to go unnoticed, okay? And so then um, it says, then they that are my enemies shall appear to behold it. And, sh and shame shall overwhelm and hide them, which said to me, where is the Lord your God? So these are people who were, who were questioning your faith. These are people who were questioning your belief in God. They were saying, well, you're going through all of this. Where's God now? You know, you're dealing with all of this. Where's God? Right? So he says, again, I'll read it again. Then they that are my enemies shall appear to behold it. So the, word is, the Lord is saying that they're getting ready to see this shame come upon them. Like they're getting ready to experience the shame. All right. And, and shame shall overwhelm and hide them. Hide them. They're going to become like a, a shadow of their of their former selves. Um, it says, my eyes shall certainly have the experience to gaze upon them. Now, this is the Lord saying that what you, you're going to look upon them as this is happening to them. Now shall they be trodden down underfoot, abased. They're going to be abased as the potter treads down the oppressor under his feet, like walking on the clay dirt outside. So if you ever look, have you guys ever like, I don't know if you guys know this, but like in the South, in certain uh, states, they have what they call red clay dirt. And when you walk on it, it's really crunchy, right? It's really hard and crunchy because it's dry and, and it crumbles the bits and pieces. So it's kind of like when you drop a piece of, uh, like a piece of pottery on the ground and it crumbles to pieces. So this is what, like they're about to experience a crumbling. They're about to experience this downtroddenness, the, the, the downtroddenness that we've already experienced, that they laughed at, that they scoffed at, that they mocked at, they are now about to experience. And so, um, it's, yeah, okay. So that's what the Lord is saying there. So now remember what I said, guys, just because your enemies are about to receive their recompense, just because those that are that were against you are about to receive their judgment from the Lord, please remember Proverbs chapter 24, verses 17 to 18. It says, rejoice not when thine enemy falls and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it and it displeases him and he turns away his wrath from him. Okay. So the Lord is telling you what's getting ready to happen to your enemies, but he's saying, do not rejoice over it. Do not rejoice over what's getting ready to happen to your enemies. Okay. Um, don't take any pleasure in it. Don't take any joy in it. Like I said, God is, 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 is always ready to forgive. And so I'm praying that for those, those enemies, those who have been against us, that they, once they see that God is real and they understand his power and they understand his authority, that they will come to a place of repentance. You know, that they will want to repent and that they will want to seek the Lord's face. That is that is God's desire. He wants us all to have a heart of repentance, to be to be broken in spirit, to have a contrite heart, to repent. Right. The sacrifices of God. That's what the sacrifices of God are, as it says in uh, Psalm 51, I believe. So you want to make sure that you are not in that posture of like, yeah, see, you finally going to get yours. No, 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 no. That is not what God wants us to be. We have to have that posture of humility that we have learned to acquire to walk in that humility, to be gracious, to be merciful unto those, even though they weren't merciful unto us. You have to be merciful unto them, okay? Because this is the Lord's doing. It has nothing to do with you, per se, all right? This is what the Lord is doing. And the last part here is, now, now then, what kind of man of harmonious accord agrees together with consent as an anointed one with the worthlessness of the devil. So the Lord is saying, like, how, if you being now an anointed one, someone who has come into a harmonious accord with the Lord, someone who agrees with the Lord, how can you be associated with worthlessness that comes from the enemy? Right? 
So the Lord is saying that you, you won't be associated with worthlessness anymore. He's getting ready to separate you. He's, you are getting ready to be raised up. You will not be recognized or noticed for being worthless at all. Um, and, and then he goes on to say, or rather, what kind of man is a partaker of a portion that he faithfully trusts in with a faithless unbeliever? So the Lord is basically saying here, so in, in, in what you're in what you're believing God for, how can you share that with someone who doesn't believe for it? OK, so the Lord is he's separating the wheat from the tear. That's the way I see it, like the wheat from the tear, like it, they, they've been coming up together for a while. Now it's time for that separation, right? The separation of the wheat from the tear. It's harvest time. We are entering into harvest season. So it, that it's time to, to separate the wheat from the tear. And so the blessings of the Lord are about to fall upon his, his, his children, but also his judgment as well is about to fall upon his enemies. And we are not to take joy in that. But the Lord is telling us to rejoice in him now, to give him praise for what he's about to do because he is about to do it. And so... Um, I wanted to read to you Psalm 89 and just to give you an idea of what the Lord is saying here. Psalm 89 says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. All right. I have sworn unto David, my servant, thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in, in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thine strong arm. That is what the Lord is about to do. The enemies are about to be scattered. The heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand and high is thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. That's what we are about to experience. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. I apologize, guys. Then thou spakest in vision to thy Holy One, and saidst, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. You could put your name there. With my holy oil have I anointed him. The Lord has anointed you. With whom my hand shall be established. All right. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. The Lord is about to strengthen you with his mighty arm. And you are about to be established by the hand of God. The enemy shall not exact upon him. Nor the son of wickedness afflict him. So this is the Lord telling you. The enemy is not going to come. It's not going to uh, uh, affect you anymore. And the, and the wicked person is not going to be able to afflict you anymore. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. 
Remember, we talked about a horn before. The Lord has mentioned it twice. This is the third time that the Lord has given me a scripture about a horn. So I'm telling you, that horn, that horn represents you, the, the, the dignity and the glory of God being upon your life. It represents victory. It represents so many things. All right. Um, I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn. Now, remember, the firstborn in scripture always receives the birthright, okay, um, and the inheritance. Higher than the kings of the earth, my mercy will I keep for him forever, forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever. So the Lord is saying that this, this blessing that you are about to receive is going to be generational. And his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Now, the Lord is basically saying here is like if they stray away from from because you are in alignment, you have brought you are the one that has brought the blessing upon your family, upon your bloodline. And the Lord is saying here is that anyone who comes after you that, that, that deviates from the blessing, the Lord will use his rod of correction, his rod to chastise them, bring them back into alignment. OK, um, and he's saying that he will never break his covenant because the key, now you are in covenant with the Lord. So that covenant will never be broken. But the Lord is saying that if he has to chastise, he will. Because the Lord chastens who he loves, right? So he says, once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. But thou hast cast off and abhorred Thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. So this is the Lord is what David is saying here in this moment is he's he's saying, you know, Lord, I'm going through basically. Right. So this is this is what many of you have been experiencing that you've been going through, been going through and you've been waiting for this moment for God to deliver you. Right. So um, he's saying all that passed by the way, spoil him. And he is a reproach to his neighbors. Right. So this is how he's seeing himself in that moment. And that's how many of you see yourself. Um, verse 42, he says, thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame. How long, Lord, wilt thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. Lord, where are thy former loving kindnesses, which thou swearest unto David in thy truth? Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants. How I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. Wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed. So David is saying, remember me, remember me in this hour, remember what my enemies have done to me and remember what I have gone, what I have endured. And that's what you've been asking. That's what you've been saying to the Lord. And the Lord is saying this, this prophetic word that the Lord has uh, um, uh, released me to give to you today is the Lord saying that he's getting ready to, he's getting ready to give you uh, you know what you've been waiting on and you're getting ready to see your enemies um, judgment okay so the last verse says blessed be the lord forevermore amen and amen all right so again guys that is what the lord is getting ready to do 
I'll read the title again and then we're finished. The Lord says, bow down and praise me. It's time to put the devil to shame and for you to be established. That is what's getting ready to happen in your life. All right. So be encouraged. I pray that this word blessed you. Thank you all to all the subscribers that have been longtime subscribers. Thank you so much for rocking with Coach Timothy the way that you do. I appreciate all of you so much, and I love you all with the love of the Lord. To all of the new subscribers, thank you for, for becoming new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. God bless you. And again, like I said, all of my information is there in the beginning, uh, the description of the channel, where you can find all of that, the email, all of the, all of the links and, and so forth. You can find there if you feel led by the Lord, you can sow into the channel. The information is there as well. And also, um, the memberships and everything, I'm, I'm still vamping those memberships. So just give me a few more days um, to get that finished and to get that up and running correctly. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I'm missing. Oh, there is something that I'm going to be pr um, um, bringing to the channel really soon. Um, the Lord is kind of um, giving me a divine connection. I'm not ready to announce it yet, um, but when I do, I'm going to post it and I pray, pray that many of you will join into it. Um, it is something that, that I do believe that is, is for the people of God for this hour, especially the Josephs. Um, so just keep an eye peeled for that. I'm going to be posting that probably within the next few days. And um, yeah, that's it. I wish all of you a beautiful weekend. I pray that the Lord blesses all of you tremendously. Uh, remember what I say, guys, Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All right? So if you are watching this channel and you're not saved, I, I, I admonish you to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I admonish you that even if you are backslidden, God is married to the backslider. Come back to the Lord. Um, and for all of us to, to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. I, I, I feel the need to say that today. So to make sure that we are all in, in, in alignment with God's will, because what is getting ready to happen in our, in our lives is big and we have to be in place. We got to be in, in the right place, in the right frame of mind and our soul. Our spirits have to be aligned with God. We have to just be in one accord with the Lord at this point. So just begin to rejoice, begin to give God your best praise, begin to, begin to just thank God for what he's getting ready to do because it is about to happen, guys, it's about to appear. So with that being said, I bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus until the next time, take care and be blessed.